well done. Praises. Yeah. Thanks, Chrissy. Wow. Chrissy, you're amazing. Every single day goes by and I think about you and I think about how would Chrissy deal with this? And I'm supposed to be saying access, but I say, how does Chrissy think about that? Okay, what okay, decision? Well, <laughs> thank you so much. All you're right. a guru, Chrissy. Uh, yeah. oh, absolutely. <laughs> thank you, Chrissy. Well, actually, I'll tell you what I am now. I'm a silver swan. <laughs> A silver swan. Yes, and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Wow. Tell us about that. What is that? And um, But first of all, let's just get started and expand our being and our awareness. And there's a couple of very exciting things that I want to share with you, awarenesses that I've been having recently. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> first of all, you can either close your eyes, you don't have to close your eyes, but take your awareness which is the being that you be and expand it in all directions right out, out into right out into the universe and then past the universe and into all universes and start asking for infinite possibilities. I'm asking you for infinite possibilities. Start pulling the energies of infinite possibilities into your universe and into your world and into your reality so you're asking to have and be infinite possibilities so you're pulling them be pulling may i have do you want me to turn my mic off if i'm talking as i'm going or not no if you have a question yes. do you have a question no no i mean sometimes i'm repeating to myself about Pulling infinite possibilities? Am I too too annoying or not? It, it's not annoying, but you might like to. Um, <laughs> hello, Sue. <laughs> but you might like to um, just uh, mute yourself because this yes. is being recorded and it will be posted on the internet <laughs> by other people. Okay. So, okay. so thank yes. you and welcome, welcome, Sue. Did you want to make yourself a cup of tea or? Mm. Come and see the girls. Morning. <laughs> They can't hear you because I've got this on. But morning, yeah. hi Sue. <laughs> Jenny's saying hi to Sue. So this oh. is my crazy friend, and we had a wonderful night last <laughs> night, and we were cooking. Um, Sue is a really wonderful cook, and so we made some. Kimmy, next time you come, I'm going to make you some beautiful um, sweet corn fritters. Mm -hmm. And then you put oh. them in a stack. So I learned exactly how to cook them so that they were nice and oh, crispy, wow. which is how I love sweet oh, corn fritters. Wow. And then you stack them up and you put sour cream on the top and a little bit of that sweet chili sauce and coriander sprinkled mm. over that. Wow. Yummy, yummy. And then we had oh, some yeah. crispy bacon Ooh. with that as well. So we're well, going to be doing here. a little bit I of cooking while I'm going to get some real. Okay, I'll be back right back. Remind you of the so keep your awareness and expand right out in all directions and start pulling the energies of infinite possibilities into your world, into your universe. And this is something you want to be, be doing all day long, isn't it? Just say to yourself, am I expanded? Am I out? How far out am I? So you want to go right out past this universe into all universes and even past all those universes and into other universes. <clears throat> and then when you're pulling energy, what that does is it starts you being aware of pulling the energies of everything. And when you're pulling the energies of everything, you're actually pulling them to you and through you and through your universe, through your body, through your whole universe. And that's one, one way that you can practice not pushing energy because when you push energy, you actually push things away from you. And sometimes you don't even know that you're pushing energy. So if you're pulling, pulling the energies of infinite possibilities into your world, it's amazing what magic can show up for you. So just have that awareness. 
And today I wanted to really talk about, I wanted to take, uh, there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. And one is the being the greatness of who you truly be. And really pulling that apart and looking at what magic that can create for you. Being the greatness of who you truly be is something that you is truly an amazing. Is it a tool or awareness? It's um, it's an awareness that Gary Douglas has been giving us for a long time, and I had the awareness that there was something that I wasn't willing to be. What what are you refusing to be? That if you would be it would create more than you've ever thought you could create. And I went, oh, my God, it's the greatness of me. But how much do we not acknowledge the greatness of who we be? Because one of the things that Gary says is that we only function from about 10% of who we be. And when you acknowledge, okay, I claim, own, and acknowledge the greatness of me, that feels really, it feels big, doesn't it? Does it feel kind of substantial? Mm. Mm. How does it, how do you feel when you say, just for today, I claim, own, and acknowledge the greatness of me, the greatness of me, the greatness of who I be? And I realized I've, how much I haven't been doing that. Yeah, and I've turned that up. I've turned up that I'm choosing to, and I'm actually choosing to say it as much as I can all day long. Or just for today, I'll be greater than I was and yesterday. I was just mm. for today, I'll be greater than I was yesterday. And how can I be greater today than I was yesterday? Because oh, if you are claiming and asking to be great, the greatness of you every day, you're going to be more. In six months' time, you're going to be more than who you will be right now. And when you be the greatness of you, it's like, <clears throat> it's really interesting. You can see the energies of people who have kind of like, <laughs> I suppose you could say, a weakness in their being. People who are, are constantly criticizing others, they're mm. kind of like a weakness that's not being the greatness of who you truly be. Hmm. It's not being the greatness of who you be because being the greatness of who you be, it's like you, um, one of the things I notice when I choose to be the greatness of who I be is that I don't buy into other people's points of view. Mm. I'll recognize them and go, this is not mine. Who does that belong to? Mm. Mm. And trauma and drama becomes a thing of the past. Like it's so interesting. I was, I think I was mentioning to Sue. Oh no, it wasn't. I was talking to Leanne yesterday. We did, uh, we did body work all day. And yesterday morning when I was sitting on the toilet, I found a YouTube thingy that came up on my Facebook and it was a guy that was, who was in the Holocaust, who was a Polish boy at the age of 14 when the Germans were doing the atrocities. And he was talking about um, crazy and mad stuff that the Germans were doing and I was looking at myself and going so how am I being with this am I reacting to this and Leanne and I had a conversation about it and I said well you know because my point of view is okay um is well I was asking the question is this still keeping it alive like it was very interesting to hear it from a person who had experienced and when you listened to him, I didn't listen to it the whole way through because it was so horrific. It was unbelievable to think. I mean, we know what, what happened in the Holocaust. But if, is it keeping it alive when we keep listening to stuff like that? So, I, you know, everything that brings up for all of us, would you destroy and uncreate it all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine, shorts, when yawns. But I think 
choosing to be the greatness of who I be, I didn't go into resisting and reacting to it or aligning and agreeing. I listened from a place of interesting point of view. We really don't want to create that kind of stuff yeah. on the planet anymore. And it was very interesting to hear a man talking about it and to listen and say, you know, how did people actually become such terrible monsters um, just in a country? So mm. actually, that's just brought me up to this. This is the book that I'm going to read now. I'll just put that here for a sec. Um, Gary's been telling us to read this book for a long time, and I've started reading it. It's a heavy read. But I think it might explain quite a bit. It's called Thoughts on the Nature of Mass Movements, The True Believer by Eric Hoffer. So that's my next book. That I How do you read. spell his last name? H-O-F-F-E-R. So I think it's quite a heavy read, but I've started oh. to read it a few times, but I'm definitely going to read it now because having watched that little YouTube the other day was like, oh, yeah, right. And it brought up a whole lot of points of view and thoughts. And I was going, okay, so interesting point of view. But if you choose to be the greatness of you, you won't align and agree with it and you won't resist and react to it. You can just be and observe and listen and be with that and go, yes, that did, that did happen. And what do we do with that? Or what do I do with that? Just to keep our interesting point of view about that. And don't get pulled into it. And perceive the energies of all of that. And would you please destroy and uncreate all of those energies? Time's a good zillion. Right, wrong. Good, bad, pop up all nine shorts with me on. So being the greatness of you, there's another aspect of, of, well, there's lots and lots of different aspects of being the greatness of you. If you choose to be the greatness of you every day, even more every day, like all day long, you will notice that you have a strength of being that comes to you. More presence and more being. And you don't go into the small things of life. It's like um, a listening, I've been listening to a series on Netflix called The Crown and I got pulled into it and I listened to it and then I kept on listening to more and more and more and listened to all of those, a lot of the episodes. And, and a lot of it was based on true story, on true, true, because I, well, Google is Google true. <laughs> You know, but I googled a lot of it and I couldn't believe that, you know, what they what they were doing was depicting what was had actually happened. But what was interesting to me was the the smallness of their lives, that they were always worried about what people would think of them. The royal family was always kind of dampening down the fires or trying not to react to different things that the members of their family, Princess Margaret was always trying to shock people and it was quite interesting. I found it interesting, but I really didn't want to listen to it anymore because what else is possible? So have any of you listened or watched that movie called The Octopus, My Teacher? Anybody? Yeah, yeah, both Elizabeth and I. Yes, and Karen. And tell me what, what you thought about it. It was just exquisite. Wow. Exquisite. Yeah. Mm. I watched it twice and I could even watch it again and I'm going to watch it with Sue while she's here. It's an unbelievable movie. If you, Even if you, Jenny, if you just get, and Barb, if you get um, Netflix just for a week, I'll say you can listen to that. It's a documentary and it's an amazing story and it touches the very core of your being, doesn't it? Mm. And it just touches the whole being of who you be. Um, 
and it's with gratitude. So that's one thing I want to talk about is the greatness of being and choosing to be that more. So there's lots of different questions you can ask is how can I create, how can today be greater today? How can I create, how can today be greater than it was yesterday? How can I outcreate myself today is a really great question so that you can outcreate yourself. Just asking these questions will allow you to get the awarenesses. What would it take for me to, to be greater than I thought I was? Just for today, I claim, own, and acknowledge the greatness of me. Just for today, I'll be greater than I was yesterday. And, I st and this is truly what will create more for you in your life than you can imagine because it's the being of who you be that invites more possibilities. It's the being that allows you to receive more. And I think, actually, when I think about that, that's, it was because I was, well, not necessarily because I was choosing it, but I was being the greatness of me. And then I listened to that YouTube of this, Polish man who would have been in his 90s and I was able to listen there with an interesting point of view and I thought am I really am I really able to listen to this without kind of going into the whole sadness of it all but I just noticed how much more being I was having with it Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay, does it bring up anything for you? Well, you probably get you probably get the images out of my head of what this guy was talking about. And I'm not going to say what they are because they honestly, whew, interesting point of view. We don't I want to go. The, I like, can you hear me? What's that? Yes, Bob. I love that one and I often think about what magic can I create today? What magic can I create today? I love that. That's one, that's one of your ones. Right. Well, let's ask that today too. What magic? What magic mm. can I create today? And what are the infinite possibilities? So the other thing I wanted to talk about today was generosity of spirit. So <clears throat> this book is a book that one day you might pick this one up and have a little read it's a book it's called prosperity consciousness and it was written by um this is yeah same to just bowman and generosity of spirit is one of the boy as one of the attributes and qualities you want to develop That will is is one of the attributes and qualities to have that will bring more prosperity. And in fact, when we talk about prosperity, one of the things that I notice with access consciousness is that the more access you do, it really is about prosperity because consciousness consciousness is energy. Energy is everywhere. Energy everything is energy. And everywhere you look, there's just an abundance of energy and consciousness. And that's prosperity. It's more focusing on the prosperity rather than the scarcity. And to take it a step further past prosperity, whether it's past prosperity or not, but it's another aspect of it is to choose Choose prosperity, choose consciousness, and choose wealth. Because all of us already have prosperity. All of us. We have an easy life. In New Zealand, people say that New Zealand has an easier life than most countries. So we do already have prosperity. So let's acknowledge that we already have prosperity. Because in the acknowledgement, that's when you can have more. And then ask, okay, so I'm asking for wealth. Riches and wealth, if you would like. 
Rich and wealth are two different things. Wealth is that everything. Wealth is, includes your health. It includes your relationships, joyful relationships, people who have your back in your life. And riches is more to do with money. And as we know, Kimmy, money is a creation that we have created. Mm. It's a it's an idea that we have a con as a, a convention or an idea that we've created that we've all aligned and agreed with that we will have money to exchange for goods and services. So everything that brings up times of Godzilla, will you destroy and create at all? I own good people to call nine short things. So generosity of spirit is as a bigness, greatness of being. It's a greatness of being. It's being. It, it was so funny. There was a lady that came and had a basra the other day for the first time. And when I phoned her, she said to me, well, she actually sent me a, a wonderful text and said, I feel so right. I feel so good since I saw you the other day. Um, and would you book my husband and come and see you or my partner? And then when I spoke to her on the phone, she said, well, actually, I feel so good. I don't want to tell anybody else about, about this. I want to keep it for myself. I want, <laughs> I want to keep this as a secret. That's how precious she found discovering the bars and what it was creating for her. But can, and, and you know, this is not a criticism. This is like, I, it was her acknowledging, I really love it. I love those bar things that you did. And how much do we all want to keep consciousness a secret? And that, that is that generosity of spirit It's like, you know, when somebody, the generosity of spirit is when somebody is successful. You look at families and you see, Kimmy, you're really lucky that you're a, you're a, a, a single child. Because in families, you will have some, some of the family is successful and some are not. And you look, I've been looking at my sister's two boys. One of them is just highly he's just making money hand over first he's moved to London he was an accountant he's got a girlfriend who's an accountant and they're just making over megatons and the other boy brother doesn't know what to do with himself really he doesn't know what to do with his life and which is fine but his other brother's doing so well. So do you, can you see how that creates a... And then looking at the royal family, like looking at Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret and how Princess Margaret was so jealous of her sister. What's that bringing up for you, Kimmy? What's that, darling? Sorry, I missed that. It's not just um, sisters that do it. It's best friends too, like... Um, that people people just are envious of other people and the only thing is about having sisters is you're confined to being with them for the rest of your life whereas uh, friends, yeah, you can have a break from them you know you know what I mean and it's very but, noticeable but that generous of, generosity of spirit is to go look I'm so happy like if Princess Margaret had said to her sister you know what you are doing such a great job of being the queen it was a tough job for her you're doing such a great job and I'm so proud of you would that have been greatness of the greatness of her and when somebody like Gary uses the example of somebody ringing him and saying I could I just won the lotto and I've got no one else I can talk tell about it because everyone will be just jealous of me mm. And so there's a greatness there that you be. And when somebody is being successful, it's something that you've been trying to be. Having that greatness of being, the greatness of who you be. 
is prosperity. That's prosperity consciousness. So everything that brings up times good zillion, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, proper, good, and short, and So are you all pulling energy still? Yes, definitely. And I also have a question about how to get a hold of that book and how do we organize it with you. So I'll talk later about it, but I'm, I'm interested. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Chrissy. And there's another book too, if if you're talking about, I would suggest probably, have you got, you've got the money is not the problem book? Uh, yeah, I've finished that one and I'm halfway through the magic. Yes. So, and money is not the problem book. I would recommend that you read that and study it, really okay. study it. Yep. Use all the tools in that book yep. for at least a year. Yes. And yep. there's another book that I would recommend before this one. Okay. Um, but you're welcome to get it and read it. But I think oh, you'll find good. this. Yeah, I'll stay on what I've got on then. That's fine. And yep. then there's another book called Right Riches for You, which is a really one that you want to study. And yep. then this one here. So, because this one, when this book came out years and years ago, everybody was excited. Oh, a book about prosperity consciousness. And everybody rushed to get the book. And I read the book and I went, I know all this stuff. And I yeah. put it back on the shelf. Hmm. How often do we do that with some of these books? Okay. And then it was another five years after that that it winked at me on the shelf and I yeah. pulled it out and I went I've got to start reading this and I went fuck I never saw this yeah I didn't see that I didn't see that and I really truly just just started to this is this is the one that talks about being the greatest of you now he talked Gary talks about that in the money book I was looking at the generosity one that the spirit of generosity but maybe I'm not not that one maybe I've already got that heaps but Yes, um, I, I think you have, but yeah. it's having an awareness of it. Yeah, okay, all right, okay. So, so maybe I'll just keep working on the um, two that I've got at the moment, eh? I think so, yes, because mm -hmm. there's a, a wealth of tools in there and those tools, will, you want to be using them for the rest of your life. Those okay. tools, those money tools, I don't want money, putting 10% away, everything yeah. that you earn, all of those you could call them basic tools, but I still go back to the money book and read it. Right. And the magic book and read it. Well, funnily so, enough, that came out at me the last two days. And I'm thinking, no, I've finished that one now. I'm looking for the magic book. I can't find where I put it. So I'll go back to the money one and just keep getting stuck into that, I think. To keep on and take some of those tools every day and practice them. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Awesome. I'll mute. I'll mute. Awesome. <laughs> So, any more questions? Does anybody got anything? Any things they want to change today? I have a question. Um, can you tell us about the grey swan? Oh, that's right, the grey swan, silver swans. So, a oh, silver swan, <laughs> <laughs> the grey swan. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I have, I was judging myself for not, um keeping up the swimming like I started swimming very enthusiastic did that for probably about until COVID came along then did stop going swimming stopped going to the gym wasn't doing very much exercise at all and judging myself for not sticking to things I, I'm sure none of you do that and um <laughs> and then I went to the movie I was actually going to go to a movie so Simone Melissa recommended this movie. It's called American Utopia. Um, and there's a guy called David Boone in it, I believe. It's, it's on at the Lido in Auckland, Jenny. So you might be able to go. It sounds like a fabulous movie. And I'll okay, I know the what, What's it called again? American Utopia. Okay. David Boone's is a singer. I didn't, I've never heard of him, but he was evidently around in the 70s and 80s. So it's a good movie. Um, and so I wanted to go to that and I couldn't find it. And then I saw that there was a movie um, about the, the Nutcracker Suite, the ballet with the Royal, Royal London Ballet and it was at the Royal Theatre. I can't remember. What, what's the name of the Royal Theatre in London? Has anyone been to London? Have you been yes, to London? I don't know. No. 
anyway, not yet. Uh, I went along to watch it. And it was, I mean, I love that the ballet, always going to the ballet whenever it comes to town, go and watch the live ballet. And the Nutcracker Suite is a specially gorgeous movie at Christmas time. The scenery was amazing and the dancing was truly gorgeous. And there was, I met a lady there who was a silver swan. And I said, I've been, I didn't know we had any silver swans in Hamilton because I actually had heard about silver swans and their senior dancing. There are people who are seniors who go and learn ballet dancing. And yeah. so there's a silver swan teaching here in Hamilton. And so oh. then I googled, so I googled that and then I found all these YouTubes for beginners silver swans. And it's bringing such awareness to my body. I've been doing them every morning. And I'll tell you one of the things that it's done for me is Doing the movements, you think you're not doing anything, but doing all these movements to music is just lighting up my life. Wow. And I just want to say that, you know, I might not even commit to that, but I feel as though, I, I feel as though, okay, pock and pod there. It's amazing. Movement to music and just letting yourself flow in that is just such a powerful, and the, powerful and thing. And the grace and the posture. Yeah. Mm. and the awareness of the posture that I'm enjoying. So it's, mm. if any of you are interested in silver swans, um, I don't get any commission, but there's, <laughs> there's some gorgeous YouTubes and I'm really enjoying them. And I'm going to go to the classes as well and be a silver swan. So, and get my little tutu and my ballet tutu. So how does it get wow. well? Wow. <laughs> So thank you for reminding me about that. But um, it's very interesting when you follow the energy. I'm, I noticed myself yesterday, like I'd just done half an hour of, you know, the ballet exercises and then I went, drove up to Auckland, stopped at the petrol station to get petrol and I felt absolutely gorgeous and happy. Mm, beautiful. Mm. I, um, I think that's adding to the greatness of who I be. Who wants to be the greatness of them today? Yes. You're yeah. only allowed to be it for today, not tomorrow, though. You only go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you, everybody. I'll just finish this recording. Oh, have I stopped it? Yes.